Hey everybody, Model Man here with more of the Jupiter 2. I'm just kind of standing back, uh, thinking about stuff overall, what's going to be happening pretty soon because really it's close to getting most of the lighting. I'm 50% there with the lighting on this essentially. There's a couple small pieces to do on the uh, computer wall over there. I still have a whole bunch of fiber right there to negotiate. That doesn't seem to be in the reference anywhere, so I gotta determine what I'm gonna do with that. Some of it'll be blinking, some of it won't be blinking. We'll see how it goes. This is the first time that the entire thing, oh, except for the freezer tube lights now that I'm looking, has been lit up. Let me jumper those real quick. So here's every light going that there is to go. Right now the RGBs are cycling into red, which is their default color. Then they go into green, blue, so on and so forth. This is three flickering oranges right in there for the uh, central computer on the command console. It works pretty well. It's not the moray effect that's really going on, but we'll see how it goes. There's a couple more flickering LEDs i got to put in this area here, both red and yellow. I have to install a green LED to finish out this section of, or, or this group rather, just as I've got a green LED with this orange, white, yellow, red, etc. I didn't need any extras over there though. So as I was just mentioning, all this fiber has to get fed somewhere. Some of it will be static, a lot of it will be flashing because there was a lot of flashing going on. I uh, haven't checked yet, but I'm thinking the pair graphics photo etch is not accurate to the screen reference that I've been catching. This is basically what it should look like, and I really have to redraw this diagram to uh, make sure, and I should rewatch all the lighting videos as well now that I'm at this critical stage. It never hurts to review your reference. And over here, now that I'm getting to the point where the interior is ready to be installed into the exterior, all of this garbage here needs to be cleaned up now that I know where all the light, final lighting positions are. And uh, I haven't wanted to put the landing legs in until I'm absolutely sure I'm positively ready. But I do need to start painting the exterior and getting all that going. So to that end, what I may do is just install the bare landing bays with no legs. Primer and spray paint, detail all that. I wouldn't mind doing a little more work on the landing bays to dress them up a little. We'll see about that though. There may be some small greeblies and things like that that I can add. But I would like to start getting to painting this. And I'd also like to start to get to painting this thing too. I was thinking I'd do the interior as a silver, uh, just to reflect light around. However, really, the ceiling is going to be the sand tan of the uh, floors and the walls. So it's going to be painted that, the entire upper inner thing. One big mistake I made on this exterior is cutting out this door and installing the uh, front window there. Cutting the door eliminated the uh, circular circumference of it, so it threw it out of circle, essentially. There's a proper phrase for that, I know. However, since then, matching it up to the bottom pegs has been a little more difficult than it needed to be. If I had waited till the last minute to cut this door out and not worried about it, I would have been better off. And the front windows here, I've certainly broken one of those pegs more often than enough and uh, once it was glued in there there was really no knocking it loose at all so just for breaking that one peg that's definitely too bad I installed that so early I may have to take some of these uh, I-beams out of here that I've been using for support we'll see how everything fits underneath there because that's definitely gonna have to be jammed into place but I think getting all this cleaned up and all the excess wire gone is definitely going to be a critical uh, phase and time to get things done. So with that, that's it for the exterior hull. There's still boxes of little things that need to be addressed. And uh, let's get back to lighting. 
the colors don't seem to be showing up on these RGB LEDs as well as I would like. However, they are different enough, I suppose, on the video. And they're falling out of sync very nicely. They all start off at red, and then they start drifting. The sequencer here, I've been watching it for a little while here and there. It definitely has... It is also set similar to each other at the longest possible settings, but they're just slightly out of drift. And the set of three lights on the right there that's just starting to blink has a fourth art LED, which is over there, that guy, hooked up to two of the other flashers are two other blue LEDs in these tubes, but they're not lighting up right now. I found what was happening was that while the positives were linked over to uh, these guys here, there's one, and here's the other, I had linked all the negatives together and I was running that off of a general negative uh, lead that's running around the base here. What that was causing to happen was this LED here that was driving this blue LED, the blue LED would light, this one would not. Then I tried taking the negative from this and putting it on negative from that, and again the same thing was happening. Over on this guy, with the uh, this LED that's lighting right now is driving a blue LED over here. What would happen is this blue LED would light up a little, but just barely, even though this one was going at full strength. So I, I took a spare piece of wire and started, you know, touching negatives to negatives all over the place to find out what was going on. And it was while I had uh, the negative attached to one of these LEDs, uh, this one that's being driven by that, I had been touching it to this negative and it would come on, it wouldn't come on, it would flicker, both the LEDs lost power. It wasn't a great situation, but then I accidentally touched the positive of the next LED in line and this blue LED came on bright, nice and bright, and this white came on nice, bright and bright. So, clearly, what I'm going to have to do, and then I tested that with the other LED over on this sequence, same exact thing. The positive of the LED after the one you're plugged into is where you want to put the negative power from this LED. Which I guess makes some sense somehow, but it was an interesting little revela revelation, and that is a wiring job I have to do at this point. Right now I just wanted to kick back and watch all the LEDs flash. Uh, if you want to see what this looks like from the top side, we'll do that in another video, not right now. I've got the soldering iron on standby, power's running at 12 volts, and so far all of this action is only consuming less than 0.4 amps. So I'm really hopeful to keep the entire model down under 2 amps, and that's with the computer wall plugged in and running too, keep in mind. So for a more detailed thing, uh, there's a couple white LEDs that need to go up here for the general alarm sign. I have to install the danger ball. That's got two LEDs, plus uh, that's going to need some sequencing too now that I think of it. So I'm going to have to run those fibers around and hope that they're long enough to get to where they need to go. Or I'll have to run new LEDs. Uh, red, green, and yellow are going into these. I want to run those off of a sequencer so that they'll be on or off every now and then. Typically the yellow was always on. Occasionally all three were on. Sometimes only one or another was on. This big band here is going to have one central or one static yellow LED with a couple flickering LEDs that are going to be driven by the Fedoratron Pulsator and I think that's going to get mounted right on top here facing outward so it slants down. I still have to solder that thing up. This bundle of fiber here needs to be addressed. This is a communication panel over by the elevator. I don't know the lighting sequence on that and I don't think I have it in my notes. So I have to go and check on that but right now it's just defaulting into this empty tube where I have to install a green LED because I am in need of that. There's some fiber coming off of the elevator that needs to be installed. 
there's going to be fiber coming off of the back room which is still an in progress repair situation kind of thing I need an LED up top of this back room here so that uh, I can show off the space pod wall decorations are glow-in-the-dark parts from the UFO mystery glow ship from polar lights AMT what I have to do is paint some orange or get an insert of the uh, back of the shuttle space pod rather and drop that in there along with the LED up top and as mentioned there's a few fiber optics running off of the airlock panel there that if they're not feeding into uh, the red green white which they probably are then they need to be over here on the command console there's uh, all of this bundles of fibers here are going to the lower command console I've got another 300 fibers which are going to route through this slot that slot and that slot wherever it is over there I need to be careful routing them through because they're going to be right next to some really hot resistors so what I'm probably going to do is once the fiber is fed through while the resistors are turned off of course I'm going to take some heat shrink and uh, strategically melt it around the fiber bundle to keep it protected. I have heat shrink fiber optics before, it's gone pretty well. Sometimes you never know though, so you've got to be careful. So all of those new fibers, once those come in, those are going to sequencers as well. So I'm going to need at least one more sequencer, if not two more sequencers overall. The command console lights tended to flash faster than the lights over here. However, I'll still be able to pick or I'll still be able to jump some LEDs off of this into sequences for this and uh, this guy here and so on and so forth. So this is really getting close to the end game. Uh, finishing up this computer wall is definitely going to be a major achievement. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of small stuff after that, though feeding all of this fiber and directing it is going to be a chore. And I'll have to check my reference again and watch some Jupiter 2. And I'll have to check out my Jupiter 2 reference and watch that again, just to make sure that I'm up on things. So with that, I think that's the end of this session overall and it's been like 30 hours of work so far so it's definitely been a lot it's time to cut this video down and get it posted overall so the next things I'll be doing is the blue LEDs in here getting those wired up I may do that really soon maybe even before I edit all this video we'll see how that goes but that's about it for now thanks for watching see ya